So Apple just dropped their new liquid glass UI. And honestly, it looks insane. Super clean, glossy, and just feels premium. The moment I saw it, I thought, okay, I need to figure out how to make this in After Effects. So in this video, I'm going to show you how exactly you can recreate that same look for your own videos. Whether you're into motion design or just want your edits to look next level, I'll walk you through the full process step by step. By the end, you'll know how to make those smooth, glassy layers and give your videos that Apple-style polish. I studied the new interface, broke it down frame by frame, and discovered five key animations that capture that iconic Apple feel. Master these, and your videos will instantly look more polished, modern, and, well, expensive. Let's jump right into it and recreate that stunning liquid glass look with a smooth drop animation, just like the latest iPhone UI. Here's how you can build it from scratch in After Effects. First, create the base shape. Grab the ellipse tool and change the fill color to gray. Draw it on the screen. Now, unlink the scale values and stretch it out a bit to form an oval shape. Step two, duplicate and rename layers. Press Ctrl D to duplicate the shape. Press enter and rename this layer to distortion effect. Duplicate it again and name the next one distortion map. One more duplicate and this one will be called glow effect. Step three, add inner glow to the glow layer. Select the glow effect layer, right click, head to layer styles and choose inner glow. Inside the inner glow settings, set the blending mode to normal, change the color to white, adjust the size depending on how strong you want the glow, minimize the layer, then click toggle switches slash modes and change its blending mode to lighten. You can hide this layer for now. Step 4, bevel and emboss on distortion map. Select the distortion map layer, right click, go to layer styles and choose bevel and emboss. Now tweak a few settings, increase the size as you like, set highlight opacity and shadow opacity to 100%, minimize and hide this layer as well. Step 5, apply the displacement map. Select the distortion effect layer, go to effects and presets, or use FX console if you have it for faster access. Press control and space, search for displacement map and apply it. In the effect controls panel, set map layer to distortion map, set the source to effects and masks, change both horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance, set max horizontal and max vertical displacement to 100%. You can also convert this layer into an adjustment layer if you want to distort other elements like text. And of course, feel free to experiment with displacement values to enhance the look. Step 6. Detail Preserving Upscale With the distortion effect layer still selected, press Ctrl and space, search Detail Preserving Upscale and apply it. Make sure it sits above the displacement map in the effects stack. Set the scale to 130%. Step 7. Adjust the glow effect layer Turn the glow effect layer back on, Go into its inner glow settings, change the color to a soft gray, set the fill color to black, drop the opacity to around 20%. Then right click again, go to layer styles and add inner shadow. In its settings, change the shadow color to white, set the blending mode to normal, optionally increase the choke for a sharper edge. Step 8. Parent the layers. Select both the glow effect and distortion map layers. Now parent them to the distortion effect layer using the pick whip or the drop down. Step 9. Add animation. This is optional. If you want some dynamic movement, you can animate the distortion effect layer. Try adding keyframes to the scale, position, or even displacement values to create motion and fluidity. And that's it. You now have a liquid glass drop animation that feels straight out of Apple's latest design playbook. And here's how the final result looks. Now that we've nailed that smooth droplet look, let's take it a step further and apply the glass feel to an icon. Let's create a sleek liquid glass style icon animation that blends right in with Apple's new UI style. Here's how to build it inside After Effects. Step 1. Import your background. Start by bringing in your background image to set the scene. Step 2. Create the base shape. Grab the rounded rectangle tool and set the fill color to gray. Hold the shift key while drawing on the screen to keep it square. Then set the roundness value to around 40. Step 3. Duplicate and rename layers. Now press Ctrl D to duplicate the shape. Rename this one to distortion effect. Duplicate it again and rename the next one distortion map. One more duplicate, call this one glow layer. Step 4. Style the glow layer. Right click the glow layer, go to layer styles and choose inner glow. 
In the settings, set the blending mode to normal, change the color to white, adjust the size as needed. Now right click the layer again, add inner shadow and tweak it like this. Set the shadow color to white, blending mode to normal, optionally increase the choke for more edge sharpness, minimize the layer, click toggle switches slash modes and change its blending mode to lighten, and now go ahead and hide this glow layer for now. Step 5. Bevel and emboss the distortion map. Select a distortion map layer, right click, go to layer styles and choose bevel and emboss. Inside the settings, set the size to your preference, set both highlight and shadow opacity to 100%, then minimize and hide this layer as well. Step 6. Apply the displacement map. Select a distortion effect layer, press control space, search for displacement map and apply it. In the effect controls panel, set the map layer to distortion map, source to effects and masks, both horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance, set max displacement for both to 100%. Step 7. Adjust the glow layer. Unhide the glow layer, set its fill to black and change the color to gray for a softer touch. Reduce opacity to around 20% and adjust the size to around 50. Step 8. Refine the look. Expand the distortion map layer, go to bevel and emboss and adjust. Set the size to around 20, set softness to 16, and now expand the glow layer and under inner shadow reduce the opacity to 30%. Next, search for CC light sweep using control space. Apply it to the glow layer and tweak it however you like. Then apply detail preserving upscale, set the scale to 115%, and make sure it's placed above the displacement map in the effect stack. Also, search for Gaussian Blur, set the blurriness to 5, and again, make sure it's sitting above the displacement map. Step 9. Parenting Layers Select both the glow layer and the distortion map. Use the pick whip or drop down to parent them to the distortion effect layer. Step 10. Add the icon. Import your icon into the composition, select the icon layer, press S to bring up scale, and resize it as needed. Then press T for opacity and set it to 80%. Click toggle switches slash modes and change the icon's blending mode to lighten. Now parent the icon layer to the distortion effect layer. And from here you can animate the icon, the distortion or both. The animation style is completely up to you. And that's it. You've created a modern, smooth glass style icon animation that feels straight out of iOS. Here's how the final result looks. Great, we've seen how it works on icons. Now let's explore how to shape this liquid glass style into abstract elements. Let's create a beautiful, sleek liquid glass shape that reacts and distorts like Apple's new UI elements. Here's how you can make it in After Effects. Step 1. Add the background layer. Start by importing or creating your background layer. This will serve as the base of your composition. Step 2. Create the base rectangle shape. Select the rounded rectangle tool and draw a shape at the center of your composition. Set the roundness to 80, change the fill color to black, then press enter and rename this layer to rectangle. Step 3. Apply visual effects to the rectangle. With the rectangle layer selected, press ctrl and space to open the effects and presets search bar. Now apply the following effects one by one. Brightness and contrast, set brightness to 50%. Contrast to minus 100%. In Gaussian Blur, set blurriness to 60. In the Noise, set the amount of noise to 5%. And finally, add the Transform effect. Set the scale to 120%. Step 4. Create the Refraction Layer. Duplicate the Rectangle Layer by pressing Ctrl D and rename this duplicate to Refraction. Now clean it up, delete all the effects from the Refraction Layer, change the shape from a rounded rectangle to a regular rectangle, set its fill color to black. Step 5. Link Shape Properties Expand the contents of both the rectangle and refraction layers, then use the pick whip to link the size and roundness of the rectangle layer to the refraction layer. This ensures both shapes stay perfectly in sync. Step 6. Add Glow to the refraction layer Right-click the refraction layer and go to Layer Styles, then Inner Glow. Inside the Inner Glow settings, set the Blend Mode to Normal, change the color to white, Set the size to around 35. Step 7. Apply the displacement map. Go back to the rectangle layer and apply the displacement map effect. Now configure it like this. Map layer should be set to refraction. Set the source to effects and masks. 
change both horizontal and vertical displacement sources to luminance. Then adjust the max displacement settings for both directions to fine-tune the distortion strength. Next, hide the refraction layer in the timeline for a clean final view. Lastly, parent the refraction layer to the rectangle layer so they move and transform together. Now, you can place any element, text, logos, or icons inside this shape. The combination of glow, blur, noise, and a refraction gives you that signature modern Apple-style distortion that really brings your design to life. Here's how the final result looks. Mmm, those shapes look sleek. But what if we animated them into a more dynamic, fluid blob motion? Let's build that from scratch. Let's create a smooth liquid glass blob animation inspired by Apple's latest UI. Here's how to build it from scratch in After Effects. Step 1. Create the composition. Start by creating a new composition. Name it Liquid Comp. Then set your preferred resolution and duration. Step 2. Draw the base shape. Select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle on the composition. Increase the roundness to 100% to give it a pill or a circle-like shape. Expand both Rectangle Path 1 and Transform Rectangle 1. Step 3. Anchor Point Expression. Now we'll center the anchor point dynamically. Hold Alt and click the Anchor Point stopwatch. Write this expression. This makes sure the anchor point stays perfectly centered as the shape resizes. Step 4. Reposition the shape. Now just move the rectangle to where you want it in the composition. Step 5. Animate the size. Unlink the size properties inside Rectangle Path 1. Add a keyframe to size. Start with a perfect circle, same width and same height. Move forward a few frames and stretch the width. Select both keyframes, press F9 for easy ease. Then refine the animation in the graph editor for a smoother feel. Step 6. Duplicate the shape layer. Press Ctrl D to duplicate. On this new layer, turn off the size keyframes. Instead, animate the position. Move it off screen a few frames ahead. Easy ease these keyframes too. Step 7. Add a liquid adjustment layer. Create a new adjustment layer and rename it Liquid. With it selected, press Ctrl space, search for Simple Choker and apply it. Increase the choke mat to help the two shapes blend smoothly. Step 8. Create the displacement comp. Go to the project panel and create a new comp called Liquid Comp Displacement. Double click the rectangle tool to add a full white rectangle. Then drag and drop the original liquid comp to this comp. Right click on that layer and choose layer styles then inner glow. Set blending mode to normal. Set size to 80%, range to 32%. Step 9. Set up the final composition. Create one last comp, final liquid comp. Add your background, solid or gradient. Now drag in liquid comp, liquid comp displacement. Hide the displacement layer, convert liquid comp to an adjustment layer and rename it liquid comp glass. Step 10. Apply effects to liquid comp glass. Apply CC glass and set the bump map, liquid comp displacement, ABD, SIPI other settings too. Now add CC blobalize and copy my settings. Step 11. Add a shadow layer. Create a new comp named Shadow. Add a white rectangle using the rectangle tool, then bring in liquid comp again. Right click, layer styles, stroke, color to black, size to 35%, position, inside. Back in final liquid comp, drag the shadow comp between liquid comp displacement and shape layer 2. Apply Gaussian blur to the shadow, increase blurriness to soften it, set blending mode to multiply and reduce opacity to 25%. Step 12. Create the stroke layer for extra detail. Drop liquid comp again into the timeline and rename it stroke. Apply fill, set the color to black, add CC light sweep and configure first sweep, center 1045 and 235, width 300, sweep intensity 0, edge intensity 20, edge thickness 5. Duplicate it and adjust the second one. Center 960 to 270, width 340, edge intensity 40, edge thickness 5. Change the blending mode of this stroke layer to color dodge. This will add glowing highlights and a slick glass finish. And here's how the final result looks.
You now have a dynamic liquid glass UI element ready to elevate any interface or motion graphic. And finally, let's apply all that we've learned to typography and create stunning glass text that fits right into the new iOS style aesthetic. Let's create a beautiful glass text effect that adds modern shine and depth to any design. Step 1. Set up your scene. First, import your background image into the project panel. Drag it into a new composition. Now grab the text tool and type your desired text. Use the align panel to center the text perfectly on screen. Step 2. Duplicate the text. Select the text layer and press Ctrl D three times. So you now have four layers in total. Rename them as follows. Text under dash 1, this is the bottom. Text under dash 2, text under dash 3, text under dash 4, and this is the top. Step 3. Adjust opacity for depth. Select text 1, 2, and 4, press T to bring up opacity and set each of them to 50%. This helps build layer transparency that mimics real glass. Step 4. Add Light Sweep for Shine. Select Text 3. Apply CC Light Sweep by hitting Control Space and searching for it. Now tweak these settings. Fill color black. Direction 37 degrees. Width 300. Sweep intensity 0. Then move the center point to the top of the text. Click the solo button for Text 3 to isolate it while adjusting. Next, duplicate this light sweep. Change the second sweep's direction to 141 degrees. This crisscross of light gives the text that unique reflective glass look. Now, uncheck the solo button so all layers are visible again. Change the blending mode of text 3 to color dodge. This gives the illusion of internal light bouncing around, perfect for that glassy gleam. Step 5. Add blur and glow. Select text 2 and convert it to an adjustment layer. Apply a fast box blur and increase the blurriness. This forms a soft, glowing base beneath the sharp edges of the main text. Step 6. Add edge distortion. Select text 3 again and apply roughen edges. Set these values. Border 5, edge sharpness 10, fractal influence 0. This breaks up the hard line slightly, giving it a more organic, refractive look. Now copy that same roughen edges effect and paste it onto all the remaining text layers. Step 7. Final Glow Touches On Text 3, apply Deep Glow if you have it. It's a third-party plugin but delivers a polished finish. Adjust the radius and lower the exposure to your taste. I'd suggest aim for a soft internal shine, not a neon burst. And here's your final result. Layered, luminous, and perfectly modern, this is a glass text effect ready for high-end UI, intros, or promo visuals. So yeah, that's how you bring the Apple magic into your edits. Master these effects and your videos won't just look cleaner, they'll feel like they were designed in Cupertino. Whether you're creating UI promos, client reels, or just vibing with the aesthetics, this style instantly levels things up. If this helped, leave a like so I know you're enjoying these breakdowns. And if you want more effects decoded like this, you know what to do. So over the past few weeks, a bunch of people have been DMing me or commenting saying, yo, can you teach me how to edit? And I was like, ah, that's it, I'm doing it. I'm creating a full video editing and motion graphics course. But here's the twist. I'm not building this for you, I'm building it with you. So this course is going to cover everything from basic cuts and clean edits to motion graphics, color grading, sound design, all the way to building a real portfolio or client reel. But instead of guessing what you need, I'm inviting you to help shape it. I'm launching a limited pre-sale right now for people who want to be part of the journey. That is, people who want to be founding members. You'll get access to each module as it drops, give feedback, ask questions, and help make this the most useful course it can be. Oh, and because it's pre-sale, it's way cheaper than it will ever be again. Once it's done, the price is going up. So if you're serious about becoming an editor, not just clicking buttons, but actually creating clean, professional-level work, click the link in the description, join the course, and let's build this together. See you in the next one. Peace!